Coming in at number 10, Blood Magic by Way of Time. Have you ever picked up a magic mod for Minecraft and thought it was just too tame? Where there's not enough danger involved with creating your next high tech gadget? Blood Magic is a magic based mod created by the Way of Time and maintained by Technut. It adds an expansive life based magic system which spans rituals, sacrifices, summonings, alchemy, and spell creation. In Blood Magic, the player collects life essence by sacrificing their own health or the health of mobs to power their blood magic creations on their quest to become the Arc Mage. Blood Magic is compatible and enhanced with Techromancy and Thronecraft 4. These are several additions available for Blood Magic. For example, Sangmancy, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, which focuses around automation and some even darker forms of magic such as Soul Corruption. Coming in at number 9, Something I'm going to call a three in one combo the loot craft core, the infinity craft, and the hero expansion. I put these all together just for this main reason because they all work together perfectly as a mod. This mod contains the AIP for adding superpowers, that's the loot craft one, like speed force from the speedster heroes and make them use keybinds, etc. Items like the anti superpower serum or the superpower capsule are in the game, also in ways to change superpowers. Combined with the infinity craft and heroes expansion, infinity craft adds the six infinity stones from Marvel into Minecraft, right? Do you guys know the stones abilities? Well, I'm going to let you know right now, right? You got the power stone, nearly unlimited attack damage with the hand, nearly unlimited resistance, energy blast with nearby unlimited attack damage, right? That's one stone. Reality stone, invisibility, size changing, okay? That's two. Soul stone, nearly unlimited health, fast healing, right? Time stone, rewind has the ability to rewind your position back about five seconds ago. Then loops is able to create a time loop to set your spawn location at that loop. The last accelerate can speed up the day and night cycle. Mind stone, flight and telekinesis. Now, if you don't have the hero expansion, installed you only get flight space stone this one is not included in the hero expansion but it leads you to make the mark 17 iron man suit and it's, it's so stated the hero pack is a must this is why i added them all together and finally the snap and obviously you know this it comes in with the gauntlet if you have all the stones it kills half of the loaded entities you must assemble the avengers to take down the almighty thanos well you and your friends you pray to get that gauntlet and make your friends game horrific with the powers in the world <laughs> i wish i had a time skip for covid though Coming in number eight, Inventory Pets. Now, Purplicious Cow owns the copyrights to his Purplicious Cow, all right? But Inventory Pets are living animated creatures that exist in your inventory and gives you amazing special effects. Drops, buffs, utilities, defenses, and weapons in exchange for care and feeding. Plus, some pets have the Purplicious Cow. Like I said, that, that one is copyrighted. You can't take that from him. That Purplicious Cow does look pretty good, though. There are now a total of 52 awesome, unique pets with mind-bending skills and fancy tricks. OP Pets, Slime Cube, one of my favorites, honestly. To be honest with you, it's more like the Fire Cube, okay? He allows you to walk on lava. You're walking on fire, guys. Come on. It, I had to add that through. Number seven, Mousy's Mobs by Bob Mousy, okay? Yeah, it's kind of like a tongue twister. This one is for the books though because Bob knows how to bring the real hot and heavy mobs that will make your insane craft a living hell if it isn't already. All right, so prime example, you got the badass mob, the first raw knot, all right? I might say that a couple times wrong, but we're gonna just get through it, okay? Lost underground many years ago, these heavily armored knights are not men, nor are they statues. Are they guarding something? They have forgotten what? And what are they waiting for? They have forgotten when? Are they mourning someone? They have forgotten whom? All they know is how to slay who approaches their chambers. This is the only way to damage a ferocious whatnot. Okay, its weakness is for you to discover. The only the bravest of the adventures would dare to challenge the ferocious whatnot. Upon defeat, the whatnot will drop its helmet and the axe of thousand medals for the victor. Right clicking with the axe attacks in a large arc and shift right clicking will create shockwaves that bring the targets closer to you. Neither tool can break. Talk about an OP mob, right? Sorry, console players. As you hear, that was a PC one. Coming in at number six, The Twilight Forest by Benny Mac. Imagine stepping through a portal into a twilight realm filled with trees as far as the eyes can see, breathtaking vistas, amazing discoveries await 
you around every corner. But beware, not all denizens of the forest respond to your intrusions lightly. Twilight Forest is a dimension exploration mod focused on adventure that will take you on a journey to meet strange creatures, exploring dungeons, and so much more. Some of the major features include fully fledged dungeons, diverse boss battles with elaborate mechanics, items and loot with unique traits and functionality. That's just some features. I do not want to spoil it for you guys because you'd be like, hey, Crafting J, you ruined the fun. You stupid. No, I not. You stupid. No, I not. What's nine plus ten? Twenty-one. So I just try and please by teasing, okay? Halfway through number five, the in-between lands by Angry Pixel. Also, some may know it's by Mr. Compost, right? But the mod itself was developed by Angry Pixel Modding Group. This large and expansive mod adds a whole new dimension along a plethora of exciting new content that offers an exciting challenge, survival experience. As you know, the Between Lands dimension is a dark and mysterious realm where strange and monstrous creatures roam amongst the remains of a long lost civilizations, long since decayed. As dangerous as it is beautiful, there is much to explore and discover. The player must adapt to their surroundings and keep their wits about them, or they will perish. The Cheese King has reviewed the Between Lands before, and if you haven't, Go check it out. He would like to see you guys check it out. Coming in at number four, The Midnight by Cryptic Mushroom. The Midnight is a mod being developed by Cryptic Mushroom that adds a new mysterious and scary dimension to explore. It is a dimension of darkness, the only light that comes from the crystals and various life of dimensions. You may travel willingly to this dimension, though you may unwillingly encounter the Rifter and be dragged into the strange hostile world. Between Minecraft 1.122 to 1.144 to get the dimension you will need to find a glowing red rift. These will spawn randomly during the night boost above the ground in certain caves. Rifts are often accompanied by unfriendly figures known as rifters, Minecraft 1.152. To get to the dimension you will need to find a red heap of mass in the overworld and at night, the portal will activate and you will be able to traverse into the midnight. Though before you go into the midnight, make sure you are very prepared. The midnight does not welcome newcomers as it's still being updated as we speak. Just do not get caught up late at night or you just might be up till the morning hours. Coming in at number three, Quark by Vazkey. Quark is a mod for Minecraft Java Edition. You guys are gonna love me some Java stuff, right? Aiming to enhance the base game using a very simple model. Anything added to Quark also be added to the default game without compromising its game style. The name of the mod derives from the focus on small, simple things like quarks. Each individual feature is small, but they build into a larger whole. Every feature in Quark can be disabled and tweaked individually. When you load up your game, you will see a Q button in your main menu. Clicking this button will let you configure the mod. You can tweak any and everything in just your way, or even disable things you just may not like. My favorite thing about this, no matter if you die, unless it's by PVP, the totem of holding when a player dies, a totem of holding will spawn at the player's death position. This totem will float around the air holding the player's items. Any player can retrieve the items that the totem was holding by punching it a few times. A player's totem can be located by crafting a soul compass, which is done by using a compass and soul beat. But remember, this just shows up and as I quote, it is not an item. It will still drop loot on your death. So just be careful who you want to go pick these up. Coming in at number two, Special AI by Father Toes. Are monsters boring to you? Game's not a challenge enough? So if there's only some type of mod that added different AI patterns to mobs, you know, or wait, there is a special AI. Special AI adds a variety of new AI patterns to mobs, including monsters idly breaking your light sources and certain blocks and attack AI for passive mobs, mounting AI, and a pile of unique combat AIs to keep you on your toes. This mod natively supports English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, German, and Italian. To be honest though, having special mobs, I don't know, it will be insane. Like I said, this is insane crap, and it definitely sounds very stressful, but with mobs that could do just a little bit more than hunt you down and kill you, WTF nope. Like, why do I gotta play my game like this? I don't wanna be playing like I am legend, you know, Will Smith from that movie. I know I'm from Philadelphia, but damn. Finally, at number one, the Aether. So Guild of Games presents the original Aether mod up to date for modern Minecraft versions, fully compatible with multiplayer. The Aether is a dimension in high in the sky type of floating islands. Ascend through the glowstone portal and begin a new survival adventure packed with ores, mythical creatures, and 
perilous dungeons. All you need is to build a glowstone frame, add water to the light and mystical portal, step in and you will be transported immediately to the luscious hostile paradise known as the Aether. The Aether's world is full of fantastical creatures, powerful and mysterious dungeons. Traverse this survival world and utilize the Aether's many resources. The best fearsome bosses are to be found in the Aether's three dungeons. I'm not telling you guys what the dungeons are, I'm not spoiling it. There you have it, top 10 scary, insane Minecraft mods. Let me know down low your experience. And as a wise man once told me, you gotta champion those who champion you. You better ring that bell like it's a prize fight. Crafting J Audi and see y'all next time. In a 10, Enhanced Visuals. Enhanced Visuals is a mod for Minecraft that is intended for use with Forge. The idea for this mod comes from other games, mostly first person shooters, that add effects to your screen in certain situations, like blood splatters if you take damage, or fog if you're underwater or looking up when it's raining, etc. While this mod isn't that advanced, the mod does add visuals for if it's hot or cold, blood on your screen if you get hurt, your screen goes blurry if you're poisoned, and if you get caught in an explosion, you're your screen will be covered in soot and dust while you recover. This mod is meant to be used alongside other mods in this list to add more scare factors, since alone it won't really set you on edge. But with these kinds of visuals with the later mods, it will certainly help up the up the creep to a scale of the likes the which you've never seen. In Minecraft at least. In a 9 Creepypasta Craft. Now going by Creepypasta Craft Reborn, Creepypasta Craft is exactly what it sounds like, a mod that adds famous creepypasta characters to Minecraft some of which you may have heard of before. This mod contains 13 new mobs, 7 items, and 7 new achievements for you to collect, or I guess technically their advancements now. The creepypastas featured are as follows. Jeff the Killer, Jane the Killer, Slenderman, who originally had his own mod, but uh, that mod has since been discontinued, so to my knowledge this is the only real way you can actually get Slenderman in the game. Squidward, yeah, you heard me right, Squidward. Smile Dog, Laughing Jack, who wasn't in the original Creepypasta Craft mod. Mothman, which gives me unfortunate Riverdale flashbacks. Eyeless Jack, The Rake, Seed Eater, Strider, which is weird since the Strider is already a Minecraft mod, but these two aren't the same thing. Cryotic and PewDiePie, <laughs> who was added by the mod because apparently they don't like him. I guess T-Series made this mod. However, unfortunately, this mod is only available for Minecraft 1.12, which does suck, but uh, maybe someone else will make a new updated version. Hopefully. In it 8, Hardcore Darkness. Hardcore Darkness is a pretty self-explanatory title, honestly. Like, with this mod enabled, everything that would normally be dark enough for mobs to spawn, but you can still see decently, is now pitch black. This mod, combined with some others on this list, will make you actually feel the need to wear diapers. So, if there isn't a light source, you can't see. This can also be enabled or disabled for other dimensions, including the End, the Nether, and the Twilight Forest. The mod's most recent version is for Minecraft 1.12.2, but I'm sure that there are some shader packs that it can achieve a similar quality. But considering how my Kingdom mod pack is 1.12, I, I could add this if I really wanted to. But honestly, I, I don't want to, since this mod actually messes with a lot of shader packs. Honestly, it is recommended that you have Optifine installed as well, since that allows you to access dynamic lighting, where all you need to do is carry a torch around and it will light the area around you. It's not going to help much for mob proofing, but it will certainly help take a bit of the edge off, like a, like a nice scotch or vodka. <laughs> those, those also take the edge off. In its 7, Gru. The Gru mod is something you'll know about if you've watched someone play or have played yourself the Forever Nightmare mod pack. I actually played it in VR on Top 10 Gaming and was attacked by a spider and absolutely flipped it. <laughs> no matter, the Gru mod is a part of that mod pack. And in essence, this beast of a monster will spawn and instantly kill you if you're in the darkness for too long, which is pretty damn horrific and probably the worst things that I've ever experienced. I tried to play that mod pack multiple times and was only able to actually progress during the live stream because I was tryharding at that point. Since, you know, the mod pack makes it always night, so you need to live in the darkness in order to get torches to then get out of the darkness. Anyway, with this mod on, you'll always want to keep a couple torches on you because that's the only way to make sure you're okay. I got so desperate I was carrying around one torch and constantly breaking it, then placing it back down wherever I was being watched. Oh, and if you get this mod, I recommend getting the Mo Benz mod as well because that's what makes the spiders look so terrifying. I don't know why, but just like the bent legs on spiders makes it look extremely menacing, okay? I hate spiders and I can't really include the more Benz mod as a spot on this list, so I have to throw it in here. In its six, Eyes in the Darkness. 
Eyes in the Darkness is a simple yet effective mod that when combined with Hardcore Darkness and Gru only makes you more uncomfortable. With this mod enabled everywhere there is darkness, you'll have the chance of seeing glowing orange eyes. These eyes seem to disappear when you walk closer, but watch out, because this mod loves to jump scare you. But I'll let you figure out how that works on your own. This is certainly a mod that can make things scary, but it works best when paired with other mods. And let's be honest, if you have one mod on, unless it's like a utility mod like Optifine or a minimap, you're gonna have more than just one mod. <laughs> That's the danger of modding. You find one cool thing that you wanna try, next thing you know, boom, a hundred mods, and your computer is burnt down your house. Oh, no, <laughs> that only happened to me? Okay, either way, you know that this won't be the only mod you get. Plus, when you have the Gru mod, it's like that. It's like they're always watching you when they're in, then they're waiting for the perfect moment to strike, okay? So, yes, it's creepy. How about doing number five, Epic Siege? Honestly, this is an incredible mod for a zombie apocalypse type mod pack. Because Epic Siege is a mod that gives monsters superpowers, basically. Skeletons basically never miss unless you're lucky. Spiders can web you to the ground. Creepers can self-detonate to blow up walls in order to get to you. And zombies? Oh man, zombies are overpowered. They're still slow, but with Epic Siege installed, they can place blocks to tower to you, they can break blocks to get to you, they can place TNT, although that may be another mod, and they also check light sources and can follow trails of blood that you end up leaving behind thanks to getting damaged. They will also team up with creepers and use them to break a wall to get to you quicker. You can edit these abilities in the config file, but hot, I love this mod. Combining it with zombie awareness also only makes it more intense, since now they can sense you from further away. I think this is the thing that also makes them check lights now that I think about it, but I'm not sure. And if you add a mod that lets you change what mobs can spawn, you can really make a cool zombie survival mod pack with like only three mods. But add this to others on this list and you're screwed. Trust me, especially with these next ones. In a four blood moon. Oh, here we go, the world obliterator mod. Being inspired by blood moons from games like Terraria, the Blood Moon mod adds a small chance, the default is 5%, for a Blood Moon to occur every night in your world. What does a Blood Moon do, you ask? Well, in comparison to Hardcore, you'll wish you were playing Hardcore. When a Blood Moon is active, monsters can spawn much closer to the player, like 5 blocks away instead of the 25 that it normally is, and the monster spawn rate and mob cap is increased. And the monsters are also a little tougher to boot. This can wipe out a village in one night, especially when making use of the other mods on this list, especially Epic Siege. Can you imagine it in Epic Siege Blood Moon? Like, I'm, sh I'm shaking at the thought. <laughs> I had the Blood Moon mod installed on my Kingdom mod pack, but it was wiping out my village left, right, and center so much that I had to remove it. Like, no joke, I actually removed it because it was causing too much havoc. The mod is fully customizable as well in the config menu, where you can set the percent of a Blood Moon spawning if it's guaranteed to have one every full moon, and you can even set the monsters created by the Blood Moon to despawn once the day starts, so you won't have a hundred creepers running around. Also, I highly recommend that if you're playing with Epic Siege, or if you want to roleplay, that the Blood Moon are like hallucinations or manic episodes suffered by your character because you know people do that people role play okay that would be cool a lot of a whole mod pack where like the player is just insane that's an interesting concept getting close to the end in number three legend of hero brian now known as the Legend of Hero Brine, the Hero Brine mod was the first scary Minecraft mod. Okay, well, probably not, but it was certainly the most popular for a long time. I remember playing during the Minecraft golden age of YouTube, okay, when I was trying to make videos as like an 11 year old kid, the, a Pixelmon version of the Pokemon theme song, and used Minimator to make an intro. <laughs> Cringe. That's scary because it's cringy. However, the new version of this mod is available for Forge 1.16.5 at least and includes a ton more stuff. The original version was just Hero Prime building structures and jump scaring you, but this includes bedrock swords, cursed items, holy water, a new Minecraft disc, and much, much more. It even includes a cursed forest biome. It's so cool to see how far this idea has come from a picture on the internet to literally being added to the features and bug list fixes. And and so the Legend of Hero Brian is a must-have for any OG Minecrafter who was just here when gold was butter and the only dream we had was about not having to look at that horrible netherrack texture anymore. Back when the creative menu was just one long list that you had to scroll down every time and Tech It Classic was the coolest mod pack and everyone was building Jaffa factories. Ah, those were the days. That's what made me want to be a YouTuber. Penultimately and in number two, Mutant Beasts. 
Another OG mod that has gotten some serious updates is the Mutant Beasts mod. Originally known as Mutant Creatures, with so many more mobs being added to the game, there must be a load of new mutants, right? Well, no, actually. <laughs> I think that the, only the Pocket Edition version of the mod actually has new mobs. Either way, the Mutant Creatures mod adds naturally spawning, yet rare, but also creatable mutant versions of the Zombie, Skeleton, Creeper, and Enderman mobs. Which, uh, with a mutant, like, spider pig also at some point, which made me avoid using this mod for around seven years. I'm not even kidding. Each monster has their own abilities and drops as well, with Endermen dropping a hand that allows you to move blocks and even like pick them up and throw them as weapons, skeletons dropping their bones that you need to collect and then you can make into mutant skeleton armor that gives you speed and jump boosts, creepers drop an egg that you can use to hatch your own creeper friend, and zombies drop a hulk hammer. Yeah, mutant zombies are just the hulk with extra steps. There is also a mutant snow golem that is always on your side, but they have to be made using chemical X, which I now believe is called something else. However, it's not a guarantee that this will create a mutant. I've actually done a challenge on my own, trying to beat the game with only mutants. Um, yeah, um, it, it was a bad time, okay? <laughs> And finally, in at number one, Stalker Creepers. While this mod may not be as extreme or as advanced as Epic Siege, Legend of Hero Brand, or Mutant Beast, this is probably the most terrifying Minecraft mod there is. Stalker Creepers does exactly what it says on the packaging. It makes creepers stalk you. And by that, I mean, the creepers won't explode when they see you and come up to you, okay? Instead, they will walk up and stay behind you, following you until you turn around. Once you see that there is a creeper right in front of your face, that's when it will explode. Boom! You looking for this? I don't know how this would work with the Epic Siege mod, but maybe it's worth a shot. This is horrifying for me because I hate creepers, okay? I hate them exploding my builds, but one that would follow me back from like a cave into my base without me knowing and then exploding in my storage room irks me to my very core and I don't want to have to deal with that. A lot of people disregard this mod but honestly it's probably the single best addition to a mod pack that aims to be terrifying because no matter what you'll always be worried about what's behind you and then you can't check because if you're right you'll explode. Always carry a bucket of water because if you hear that like the pressure plate sound happen behind you again you'll need to stop the creeper from damaging anything. Uh, so uh Hopefully it's not standing on the pressure plate because then it won't actually be in the water and it will still destroy everything. Number 10, the Blood Moon. This mod is scary and it is great for any gamer. If you have a great creator server where you are the king like Connor over here, you have the Blood Moon come up more often in this event mod. It prevents players from sleeping turning the sky red and changing the rules on mob spawns. When the blood moon is active, mobs become more able to spawn as near as a single block away. Not six freaking feet, like damn it, I need my space. The number of mobs spawning is increased four times over. The blood moon has a 1% chance of triggering each night, but as stated, you can change the spawns for when it happens. Playing this mode with friends will give your regular game a big boost for nighttime fun. Just keep the jammies on, okay? And at nine, the morph mod. It's not the mod itself that's scary, really. Like, this mod is scary because of what your friends can do with it. If you're familiar with old school Minecraft series, back when this mod was really popular, you may already know what I'm talking about. The morph mod adds the ability for you to morph into whatever creatures you've killed, including animals, pigs, and even mobs from mods. Meaning that you can, in theory, if enabled in the config, morph into the Wither or the Ender Dragon. But even if it's not, morphing into a creeper then standing behind your friend is probably one of the most cruel things you can do to them. Or even if you're like, if you become a spider using the Mobenz mod. Or literally any mutant creature if you're using the Mutant Beasts mod. So, yeah, it's a pretty scary mod when your friends like to be dicks. And oh boy, do my friends like being dicks. Moving on to number eight, we go into the total darkness. Honestly, this mod makes Minecraft become just a straight up horror game to play with your friends, and you got to survive. This mod does exactly what is said. It makes the game's textures darker, where you need to be either holding a torch, laying them down, or have some type of light source. I love playing this mod with my friends, 
Oh wait, it definitely wasn't for the weak hearted I tell ya. Everything is dark, enemies come out of nowhere, and you definitely have to be on your P's and Q's. The quick moments when you lose your visibility of your friends and playing without the navigation coordinates of course, you really can't tell who your friends are before you slash them and think that they're coming to kill you. That's definitely not the mob squad you want to kill. Definitely not your own. What's the term that they use in Nemo? Fish are friends, not food? Yeah, same rules apply here, but we don't eat flesh. Unless there's no other choice, then you just gotta plug the nose and muster up the strength. And it's seven camouflage creepers. If you've watched the scariest mods video, you've seen me talk about stalking creepers. And while that mod may be easier to handle with friends, since you know they can let you know that it's behind you, the camouflage creeper mod certainly isn't. Allowing creepers to take on the texture of whatever block they're standing on, you can have a creeper following you for ages without even realizing it, especially if stalking creepers is installed. You can be in a cave and then wondering why the stone is getting bigger, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're dead. Like, boom, you are looking for this? I'm gonna keep saying that every time I say boom. It's like one of the most horrifying things, and this time around, your friends may not even be able to help you. And the creeper will also take on the texture of the floor of your base. So, yeah, have fun with that. Although I would like to see an obsidian creeper though. That, that would be interesting. I think that'd be kind of fun. Going on to number six though, we got the Epic Siege. This is another one of my favorites, I tell you. This mod is for the ages. See, a crafter like me, I like to chill, build, sleep in night, and start my next day finishing my build with the community. Well, this is just dirt nasty, I tell you. Dirt nasty. Mobs are more deadly, creepers are loaded with fire and do more explosive damage, zombies break your walls, yet it's fun, but it's a horrid time. I say this because I have a glass house. Yeah, glass. and. Just to grind alone, oh, you already know. My community house has over 300 pieces alone. So yeah, watching your friend's build gets destroyed, painful, yes. Very funny, yes. But hell, when you're in voice chat and it happens to you, and you're on the end of the stick, it sucks, I tell ya. Halfway through into number five, Weeping Angels. The Weeping Angels mod is exactly what it sounds like. It adds the creatures from what is probably the scariest episode of Doctor Who into Minecraft. Now, these statues will randomly spawn at night, but will stay still when you're looking at them. But the moment there are no eyes on them, they will come at you full force, and actually fairly quickly. Luckily with friends, if one person is looking at them, they still won't move, but there can certainly be some stressful moments when you're fighting off hordes of mobs, but also have angels on your ass. I think that one of the biggest things of horror is like being alone, so being with friends does help that feeling, but if they're just as helpless as you, is it really that much of a help? Not really. And since the Weeping Angels can't really be killed too easily, you're gonna have a nice time trying not to get insta-gibbed by these rock hard dick bags. And yes, pun intended. On to number four, something I like to call the real life Minecraft pack. This mod is actually pretty awesome. It's definitely a great one to play with your friends. And if you thought 100 days of horror survival is hard, try this pack. When I see real life Minecraft, legit, it's real life. Survival's harder. The text packs look immaculate, hands down. It's not just about the visuals though. You run out of stamina faster. You need to eat more, fill up on energy, mining a lot. And good luck trying to fight the mob hordes in the night. The simple water trident zombie will smack you silly. If you're caught in his territory, that is. Like, where's Blue Steve, Mr. Protector of the Sea? Yeah, I give this a 10 out of 10. If you want a harder experience and not having to do too much changes to your game, this definitely makes the multiplayer experience real great. And you'll definitely be hearing, hey, it's time to get your in bed so we can start the next day. Getting close to the end in number three, Scape and Run Parasites. The foundation mod for the popular I spent 100 days in a parasite apocalypse Minecraft video by Forge Labs, the Scape and Run Parasites mod adds a load of messed up creatures into the game. This mod adds hostile parasite themed mobs into your Minecraft world as well as optional dimensions for you to fight in. They can be dangerous, scary, and some of them can even learn from their fights to evolve. 
Yeah. They have no biome specific spawns so you can't find them anywhere, and the parasites just don't burn in the daylight. They can also be allowed to attack other hostile mobs, showing that they're the only ones who will reign supreme. Along with assimilated cows, humans, sheep, and wolves, this mod also adds an assimilated big spider with an unknown origin that is one of the most terrifying things I think I have ever seen from a mod, including the spider pig from Mutant Beasts. So if you decide to install this one, for whatever reason, because you're a sadist or something, good luck. Uh, number two, horror movie monsters. We've touched on this one in my last review. Horror movie monster mod pack makes the game so fun. I'm an avid horror movie fan myself. Even my Minecraft name is Mr. Kruger. So if you have any friends that enjoy horror flicks that also play Minecraft, this is one for them. Being chased around the village and neighboring towns, oh man, it is hectic, let alone scary having Chucky run after you or have Jigsaw stare you down asking if you want to play a game. Hell no, I'm already playing one. We don't need Jigsaw games, I tell ya. Christ. Pair this one with total darkness and you're in for a wild ride. Your friends won't be able to rest easy. And finally, in at number one, the Between Lands. The Between Lands dimension for Minecraft adds an entirely new dimension to this game called, uh, can you guess? Haha, <laughs> that's right, your mom. Sorry, I meant the between lanes. Along with this new dimension, the mod adds a ton of original blocks, mobs, items, mechanics, and even music into the game. The portals to the between lands will spawn in swamp biomes around your world. There you may find a druid circle, a small circle of ruined stone spires with a mysterious altar in the center. You'll have to defeat some dark druids that spawn around the altar in order to collect the shards needed to open the portal, but once you do, you're in for one hell of a time. The dimension is dark and full of terrors, with constant fog, an eerie greenish tint, and plenty to explore. Are you and your friends brave enough to enter the between lands, or would you rather go back to the nether, which is heaven compared to this place? Uh, you know what? I doubt it. You're all pansies. Prove me wrong. And it's an Ice and Fire. Ice and Fire is a Minecraft mod that adds additional fictional mythical beasts into Minecraft. Anything from dragons to wraiths, this mod has it. Sirens, pixies, death worms, cockatrices, trolls, more than typical YouTube comment section, sea serpents, cyclopses, overpowered dragons, gorgons, hydras, and even things like werewolves, vampires, and wendigos are planned. This mod will throw you for a loop and will terrify you when you actually like play normally, let alone adding virtual reality into the mix where it seems like you're really there and really in danger. And don't even get me started on if you play this in hardcore. But also, if you do install this mod, turn down the amount of dragons that spawn Okay, because like, like you gotta you gotta bump the number down of the mounds and caves, because holy crap! If you don't, they will be everywhere. They will be like in every other chunk. And like I said, they're OP. In at nine, SCP Lockdown. SCP Lockdown is a revamp and updated version of the SCP Craft mod. This mod adds a whole load of SCP creatures into the game, like the most well-known ones of Peanut, Plague Doctor. And more. The mod currently includes 63 SCPs, and they plan to add more, so they request that you don't ask for any specific ones, since the different abilities of the creatures have different levels of difficulty to code, especially with Minecraft. This mod even gives you debuffs if you don't sleep for long periods of time, and I guess like the phantoms, because they were added like later, because currently the mod runs on 1.12 and does require forge like the rest of these mods do. However, it is it might be incompatible with Optifine, Optifine which I, I don't know how that's possible, but oh well. And I mean like, yeah, you have to, it works with the VR though. Reading about SCPs is already scary, like when you think of the possibility of them being real. However, actually seeing and experiencing them in VR is a totally different story. In at 8, Mutant Creatures. Mutant Creatures is already a terrifying mod, with mutant versions of monsters like the skeleton, creepers, zombies, endermen, along with some odd pig spider thing that I actually loathe. This thing gave, gave me nightmares. It made me stop playing Minecraft. But seeing them on your screen is fine. But when you're actually in the game and they're towering above you, like your actual height, it's absolutely horrific, okay? That's where I draw the line. That freaking spider has a freaking pig head and like a giant thorax with the long legs and it's already the worst thing that I've ever actually seen. But put that in virtual reality, I could hardly handle Skyrim VR spiders. Why the absolute 
when I do this. Spider pig aside, the mutant creatures mod will surely give you a shock in virtual reality. So honestly, play it at your own risk. As long as it's compatible with VR. And I mean, like, I know most gun mods aren't compatible with VR, so maybe some of these could be incompatible, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're all good. Maybe we'll have to test that out at some point. I don't know, it just seems like it would be, it would be damn scary, okay? I'll tell you that. Just, just don't do it. And it's seven Mo Benz. Mo Benz is like one of the worst mods. Not in like, it, it's terribly coded kind of way, but like, it makes the spiders creepier. Okay, this thing adds new animations to the mobs and the player, making them feel more realistic and less blocky, although the mm, things for the player don't really matter because you're in VR. This mod includes things like making zombies limp, adding better run animations for the player, and uh, spider knees, <laughs> and jump animations, making them some of the scariest things ever. It doesn't change your game in any other way, like other than just adding the bends to these characters and modifying the like the skeleton of the mobs, but it's just, it's gross, okay? If you want a vanilla experience but want to make your game make you want to brown your pants, this one is for you. You should have seen how I reacted when I fought a normal spider in Minecraft VR that one time, okay? I would react to that the same way. I would react to this the same way, but ten times worse. Because he has knees. But like, also jump animations. The last one had knees, but this one had- this one has jump anime. I don't like that, okay? And if you add a mod that makes things even darker, no thank you! I know that this- this is the last no I know that this was based on spiders and kind of the last number two, but like, still, can you blame me? No, you can't. And it's six Slender mod. While Slender the Arrival supports the Oculus Rift, there won't really be anything scarier than hearing the sound of every light source around you breaking, and then hearing the ever familiar sound of static as Slenderman approaches you. This Minecraft mod, while not the scariest, is some of the best fun that you'll ever have in Minecraft VR. I mean, like, technically, it, it's the creepypasta craft that adds Slenderman, because Slenderman, the Slender mod is, is really old, but, but still. Hearing a load of glowstone breaking around you is always unsettling, but then you realize that they broke because Slenderman is nearby, and then your pants are brown. Nothing can save you from the cold, icy grip of death, okay? Sure, it's just the game. It can't hurt you, bull. He will escape the game, and then you will have to be- you'll live through the Slenderman movie, okay? And I think that that's probably the scariest thing of all. Do you really want to be a part of that mess? And by mess, I mean the movie, not the situation. <laughs> if you do want to try this mod, throw like a shader in there with some fog, and then, you know, you'll be- you'll really- you'll really be- you'll really have a time. You'll have a time! You'll be crying. Yeah, it'll happen. Halfway through into number five, Resident Evil. Resident Evil is already scary. And then it's even worse in VR. So, what do we do? We add it into a blocky world and then cause all sorts of panic when you have to run away from blocky blobs infected with the T-Virus. The Resident Evil mod adds plenty of the Resident Evil monsters into your game. It replaces the sound effects and will just all around make you wish that you hadn't done this to yourself. The mod runs on version 1.12.2 and it might be updated at this point, I don't know. But like, I don't get why every mod is for like 1.12.2 and not even 1.16. It's it we're at like 1.19. 1.19's coming out soon, and mods still aren't updated to 1.16. It's been so long. We've been stuck inside with nothing to do. Like, what are you doing other than updating your mods? It's it's been a while. Can we get these good mods to update, please? Like, I I, I want Netherite if I'm gonna be fighting off the living dead with some freaking like bodybuilder juice. Okay, I can't I can't say like the real. Bodybuilder juice cuz you know YouTube, but like You gotta love our all-powerful overlords, right? And it for stalker creeper Stalker creeper or it, it may be known as something else these days is a simple but horrifying mod that will jump scare you on a regular basis And we all know how I feel about jump scares Remember how like creepers would come up to you when they see you and then they just explode when they get close yeah, throw that out the window. Now, they will follow you for miles, not exploding until the perfect time. What's the perfect time, you ask? Oh, haha, <laughs> it's actually when you see them. Yeah, that's right, they'll stay glued to your ass like it's you with your girlfriend. You turn around, 
and they will practically be taking up the same block as you. Like if they were any closer, they'd have to start paying you for child support, but then they explode, which only adds to the whole they'll have to pay you for child support reference. And also, it, it explodes instantly. Like, you have no way to actually run away. It's not like the typical charge of, no, no, no. You turn around, boom! That, that's what happens. Making you have to ensure that you have some form of measure that will let you protect yourself. Like, a pressure plate with a light, maybe, that if it, like, if, like, when you walk into your house, you're looking at a light, and, like, if it, it lights up when you step on it, then if it lights up again, you know something's behind you, and then you can, like, place water down, or something like that. Um, but, like, Jesus Christ, I don't want this in VR. Can, like, can you imagine that? Just, like, turning around and seeing the giant creeper face in your face, lust in its eyes, and then it just, then without warning, it explodes on you? That's nasty. Getting close to the end in number three, the Hero Brian mod. Hero Brian is one of the most famous creepypastas of all time, let alone with Minecraft. So when we heard that he was being added to the game via mods, it was unbelievable, but also highly expected. The mod is simple, summon Hero Brian and then he'll start messing with your world and scaring you. But honestly, in VR, this would be dope. Not just cool because like you get to experience Hero Brian, but also it's scary in like the best way. This guy will spawn lava, zombies, himself, evil chickens, lightning, and more. He has traps, he will stalk you, he has many houses and structures that will get you killed. And he'll scream at you randomly because that's the kind of person he is. This mod was made back in 2012, but currently it's updated to 1.7.10, and I think that there might be some version that is actually uh, more recent as well, with like 1.12 at the very least. But this mod won't even let you like actually like sleep in game without giving you nightmares on occasion. Um, that are like mini adventure maps that are actually really cool. But like if you're looking for like a good Minecraft VR horror experience or just like a good Minecraft VR experience in general that like you can maybe role play to, go with the Hero Brad mod. You can have some fun stories, like Shadow of Israfil style. But ultimately, in the number two, Epic Siege. Epic Siege is a monster mod that doesn't add monsters, per se, but it definitely buffs the current ones. Like, giving creepers the ability to self-detonate and blow up walls to get to you. Or, spiders being able to web you to the floor so you can't move. Or, the best ones, making zombies just as powerful as you. Yep, that's right. They can build, break blocks, and even place TNT. I mean, the, the TNT thing might be another mod, but like, they can break and place blocks, and they, they are relentless. They will come after you. They can nerd pull, they can do everything, okay? This mod makes the enemies work like a team, and they will be able to get to you no matter where you hide. So you better, you better start thinking of some defenses right now, because goddamn, they will be after your ass, and they will kill you. You will never be safe. Endermen can even teleport you instead of themselves. Yeah, screw having like three block high ceilings if Endermen will be that overpowered, okay? I'm keeping it at two. Zombies are also able to like dig blocks to get to you and like you can kind of blacklist which blocks that they can break so that like you can like make it so that they can only break glass, but still that's not okay in my book. I, just, I don't like it. And finally, end at number one, Forever Nightmare. Forever Nightmare is a mod pack that I've played on another channel before. Uh, I've actually played it a, a fair amount. It's actually the mod pack that I was referencing before when I said I fought a spider in VR. Yeah. This mod pack makes the game permanently night, makes the darkness almost instant death, and makes you want to cry at every turn. Why? Because a YouTuber decided to make that happen. Yeah, that's right. This mod pack was developed by YouTuber The Chosen Architect and is available on the Twitch launcher, aka the Curse launcher. However, it is not VR compatible normally, so you need to kind of do like a little tricksy thing and like where you copy and paste the mods and bring them into your own personal like Minecraft thing and add them to a profile that has Vibecraft installed to get it to work. But then you get a day cycle, in which case you'll need to actually like use commands to make it night. Minecraft in this mod pack in VR is still one of the most horrifying things that I've experienced and I've played FNAF VR and the forest in VR. That's even worse, even if there's no monsters. But like, I, I, I'm also like just a little bit but still, only do this if you really want to and you like you really want something scary Because uh, it also has the weeping angels mod and I think I feel like that one was pretty obvious so I didn't put it on this list, but still if you're only debating it do something else first And then feel free to combine all these mods in this list so you can create something truly terrifying That's all the time we have for today friends. Thank you all so much for watching I have been in shower main Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video